Go love your own enemies. Don't be loving mine. My enemies are the theocratic fascists. I, I don't love them. I want to destroy them. child made in the image of God. Oh no, you're not. You're a faggot. And you can't join your church and you can't go to heaven. This is disgraceful. It's inhuman. So there's this new page, or maybe it's an old page, and I just started finding out about it or noticing it yesterday. On Facebook, that's dedicated to ridiculing atheism. The page is called The Absurdity of Atheism. And if you're an atheist and you go to this page and you post even a couple times, you'll get blocked. Yeah. So this little, this little uh, picture that they put up, first of all, I want to address the, the title, The Absurdity of Atheism. So it's absurd to not believe. <laughs> really? The absurdity of atheism, it's, it's absurd to not believe in God. I have a hard time wrapping my mind around that. It's absurd to not believe in God. Really? Your, your belief system is so correct. It's just <gasps> absurd to not believe it. The arrogance. You know, atheists don't need to have a reason to be atheists. It's not a question of whether you think it's absurd or not. The fact is, and try to understand, because this is very important, atheists exist. It's like saying the absurdity of trees. Damn, it's so absurd those trees exist, isn't it? Don't you just hate that those trees... How, how dare they? I mean, they're so stupid that they exist. It's like that. The absurdity of dairy cattle. <laughs> atheists exist. If you think it's absurd that atheists exist, well, I'm sorry that you fail so miserably in convincing your other people that your beliefs are the true ones. Because that's why atheists exist. It's not a question of whether it's absurd or not. It's a question of the fact that nobody's been able to convince some people that the stuff that you put out is true. Is it the atheist's fault that you fail to convince? Oh, I'm sorry. Should they just should you they just pretend to believe because you you think it's absurd that they exist? Should, just, should they just make it easy for you and walk around pretending that they believe, so you can have that little fantasy that everybody thinks just like you and believes the same things that you believe? Is, would that make it better for you instead of daring to oh I don't know express an opinion that is different than yours? Or, or express the fact that, you know, I'm not convinced. You haven't convinced me. Does it piss you off that people dare to say that or, or make it known that they're not convinced? You kind of have to convince people before they can become what you want them to be. You have to first convince them why they should become what you are. You have to first convince them that your beliefs are the real ones, the true ones. And you know what? I'm sorry, but a book doesn't cut it. There's lots of holy books. And just saying, oh, mine's extra special because mine is inspired by God. And oh, I know it because my religion says it is. Or, or it, the, book, the book says it is. Yeah. I'm sorry. Oh, but you know what? Newsflash. All the other religions out there that have holy books are probably saying the same thing about their holy books and their gods and their belief system too. One of you guys needs to stand out from all the others and do, do what nobody else has ever done. 
And what is that? Provide supporting evidence to show beyond a shadow of a doubt that your beliefs are true. What do you have to do? I've said this so many times. Prove there's a God. Yeah, prove there's a God. How hard is it? God is huge, right? He controls everything. He's part of everything. He's behind everything. It's all part of his plan. He's the one doing the pulling the strings. Okay, so he's he's so big. He's so powerful. Prove he exists. Prove that there's an energy source out there other than the sun and water and wind and fuel. Prove that there's an energy source out there that's beyond all those things, that has no explanation whatsoever in the natural world. Prove that. You know, maybe you can't call the guy down to have an interview on Fox TV, although I'm sure Fox TV would love to put something like that together. But you can prove, you can. Show us his energy. He's, he's God. He's got to have some kind of energy source, right? He's all powerful. There's some something there that gives him that power. So where is it? Should be testable. Should be verifiable. Trackable. Readable. How how many other words can I put? <laughs> so so really, you know, before you call people who don't believe because they're not convinced because you fail to convince them, show us the evidence. Put it on the table. So let's look at the rest of this stupid little thing. It's a picture of a bunch of questions. Why atheism is the title. Why atheism? Because that's kind of like the fallback position. People who don't believe because you have failed to convince, they're atheists. They don't believe it. They believe in God. Get over it. Move on. Who the fuck gives a rat's ass? I'm sorry, I'm using potty mouth. I think it's Bible thumping wing, wing nut who calls it potty mouth. But when I get really angry and I start ranting, this is what happens. You know, why atheism? Because you have given us no better answer. You have not told us, you have not shown us that there's a God, so we don't believe in a God. That's why atheism, that's why atheists. Atheists exist because people exist that don't believe in a God. And they don't believe in a God. I know I'm repeating myself because I don't know why it seems to be hard for you to understand. Because you fail to convince. Yeah. Now he's going to list questions. Theist. What were you before birth? Atheist answer. I don't know. I think this is supposed to be mocking the atheist somehow. I think that's an honest answer, don't you? I would rather be honest. I would rather live honestly. I would rather see the world honestly. See reality. Nobody knows what, what, what was I before birth. Ah, uh, well... I, I wasn't really, it, as far as I know, I did not exist. Do you know? <gasps> Do you have some special knowledge that I don't have? Ooh. And where do you get your special knowledge? Is it from a book? <gasps> oh my gosh, I'm so impressed. You, you know where you were before you were born because of a book. Yeah, and because a religious organization tells you, and you're just going to believe it because why? Oh, that's right, because it's a book that says so. Maybe, maybe some people just don't like to, don't like accepting the fact that they don't know everything. They don't want to admit that they don't know everything. And so what do they do? Well, I do know where I was born before, where I, what I was before I was born, because, because, um, my, my, my Bible says so. I, what is it with that? Why do you need to know everything? Why do you, why do you have to make up answers to these questions so you feel like you know stuff? I don't know is the honest answer to that question. I would rather be honest and live honestly. Second question, why were you born? 
Atheist answer, I don't know. Why were you born? Ooh, was there some special cosmic reason? Are you that special? Why was I born? Well, let's see, two adult human beings fucked each other. I don't know if they loved each other or not because I'm adopted. Could have been just a backseat thing, you know, at a, at a movie theater. But as a result of that particular action, nine months later, I was born. Yay! <laughs> Ooh, you know, I don't search the hemisphere or my life or, or you know, scrutinize everything, trying to find out the reasons, the, the mythical, magical reasons for my existence. I don't. I exist. I have a chance on this earth to live, to breathe, to have fun, to make friends, to experience frogs in my throat, no, <laughs> to experience life. If I can make a difference on the planet while I'm here, I'm going to try to do that. If I can find some kind of meaning in my life by ho hoping that maybe I'll change somebody's life for the better, I will do that. If I can stand for something that I believe in, I will do that. But it's not because there was some special divine plan and uh, the creation of me had to, had to happen for certain events to, to, to come about. I don't believe that, you know? I don't think that there was a reason that I was born other than the natural ones that, you know, two humans populated. <laughs> and I was born! And again, saying, I don't know is the honest answer. Or would you rather pretend to have s seriously cosmic, mythical knowledge embowed upon, is it embowed, imparted, given, <laughs> given to you by God who speaks to you directly? Yes, you know it's God, that little voice in you. That's God and he speaks to you directly. Oh my God, I'm sorry, I'm on a major rant. I haven't had one of these for a while. I might be a little bit rusty. You know, you kind of have to keep up with it. If you if you if you don't do a particular skill for a while, you you, you get kind of rusty. So if I if this rant is kind of weird, it's because of that. Why are you living? Ooh, atheist answer. I don't know. Again, an honest answer. But most atheists wouldn't say, I don't know. They would probably come up with something a little bit more witty and clever, like, because my heart is beating and I'm breathing and, and I'm a living creature and nobody has killed me yet. Although Christians have come close to boring me to tears or death. Both, maybe. Uh, I'm alive because I am alive. Because I was born. Because all my organs are currently functioning. Knock on wood. <laughs> because I continue to do the things that require my life to continue, like sleeping and eating and drinking and driving my car through endless hours of the night <laughs> to earn money. Yes, this is why I'm living, because I continue to fight to survive like every other creature on the planet since the moment it is born fights to survive. Because I like life. I like being alive. I like the world. And I like walking through the woods and smelling the fresh air and feeling the wind on my face and looking at beauty and, and hearing birds singing. I like life. So it's worth it to me to continue to breathe and eat and drink and sleep and do all those things that, you know, continue to make me be living. Or, I'm sorry, is there some s cosmic, mythical reason that you're looking for as an answer? That only you know? <gasps> because you're special? You're, you have a special book that gives you all the answers. Yeah. Why, why will you die? Oh, that's a toughie. 
And the atheist answer, of course, is I don't know. Actually, again, most atheists would have a little bit more of an answer to that, you know, because there's just so much more you can say. Why? Why will I die? Well, because I own. <laughs> I'm not immortal. The end. Must I continue with that? I mean, I'm not immortal. Everything dies. Everything is born. Everything lives. Everything dies. It's called nature. It's called the circle of life. It's called what is what is part of part of living. The natural conclusion to life is death. Why is that such a problem for Christians? And why do you obsess on death so much? Why do you waste so much life obsessing about death? Oh my God, I'm so afraid. I can't, I, can't, I can't even begin to conceive of the world without me in it. Oh, it's just the, the injustice of it all. Surely when I die, the whole world will just stop turning. I'm so special and important. <laughs> I mean, really. You think you, you think that being human makes you so much more special than all the other animals on the planet. Wow. <laughs> I should be able to live forever. I'm that special. Really? Um, and, 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 you, and you know all this stuff. Again, you have special knowledge because you have a little black. Yeah. Which, I just have to throw this in, has next to no historical accuracy. Has probably no, or very next, okay, we'll say next to no scientific accuracy. And is fraught with error and contradiction. In fact, is, is proven wrong in so many ways. Oh, but it's so special. It's so inspired by a god, a deity who is what? What has he contributed? What has he contributed to our to our knowledge? Has he has he provided the cure for cancer? Jesus came down here. He had all that time, 32 years. Did he show us anything? Like, you know, you should really boil that water before you drink it. <sighs> You know, all these people dying because they're drinking bad, horrible water. Did he mention anything about, <clears throat> you know, there's this thing called germs. You should really, you know, um, do something with that infection on your arm. I mean, what did he, oh, I'll just touch you and it'll go away. Yeah, right. And so did all, just like all the charlatans that we see running around today pretending to be healers. What will happen to you after death? Again. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. An atheist would never say that. An atheist would say, um, I suspect I will be cremated. Because that's kind of the new thing. Most people are cremated because there's so many humans on the planet. And people who are aware of the fact that there's so many humans on the planet and have some concern for the, the planet, the ecosystem, whatever, you know, burning cremation, throwing the ashes at sea, so much better than using up a, a little space of earth for your remains to sit there and not even rot because they've been treated with every imaginable, imaginable shit. So you're preserved inside a box. Nobody sees you and can appreciate how preserved you are because you're in a box six feet under, but you're preserved. Oh my goodness, heaven forbid that you should rot because you're so special. <laughs> we don't want no worms chewing on us, no. You know? Yeah, I'm sorry, but that's about what will happen to me after I die, as far as I know. Most likely. Because that's what I'm pretty sure happens. But, you know, if something else happens, it'll be an interesting surprise. The fact of the matter is, you don't know either. And I'm sorry, just because a little book says so, and somebody writes holy on it, doesn't make it true. And saying it a hundred million times doesn't make it true. And people... Getting a hundred million people to believe the same shit that you believe doesn't make it even more true or any more true than if just you believe it. So you don't have special knowledge there either. But you want to think you do. Because I don't know, maybe it comforts you to feel like you have this special knowledge. And all those other poor, unenlightened people below you that you could reach down a hand and try to help them up to your level. Please. And the last question, why are you following atheism? 
I have a little problem with the question, with the phrasing here. Following atheism? Do trees follow trees? I mentioned trees at the start. The existence of trees. Trees just exist like atheists just exist. And the reason they exist is because they exist. If you knocked down all the trees, there wouldn't be any trees anymore, would you? Well, you can't knock down atheists because you don't have an argument that remotely convinces people. Not everybody is easily convinced. Not everybody is swayed by hearsay or a preacher threatening you with death forever. I'm sorry, not death. Eternal torture forever. I'm sorry. You can, you can threaten and bully me all you want to, but I still don't believe there's a God. You have failed to, you have failed to convince. So I'm an atheist. I'm not following anything. I exist because you failed to convince me. What is it that I follow? Well, let's see. What do I follow? I follow driving my car every day to earn money. I follow caring, my, caring for my animals because if I don't, my house will smell. I follow cleaning my house. I follow going to YouTube and, and getting... I follow getting hairs on my lip. I follow <laughs> going to YouTube and watching videos. I follow hanging out on Facebook and posting notes to friends. That's about it. That's that's what I follow. Should I, 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 I don't quite understand why we're using the word follow here. You don't follow atheism. Atheism isn't something you follow. I'm an atheist because I don't believe in God. That makes me an atheist. What am I following exactly? The fact that I don't believe in God and I'm an atheist? I guess okay, I'm so coming I'm done back. with my phone call and I don't remember where I was in my rant. Isn't that horrible? <laughs> um, the whole idea of following atheism. That just really rankles me. Is that the right word? Following atheism. You don't follow something. It's, I mean, it's, it's not a thing you follow. <laughs> I have other atheist friends. That doesn't mean I'm following something. I'm just, I have friends that are, other friends that, that don't believe in God. We, we get together, we commiserate about the fact that we're judged just, just because we can't believe in God, we're judged as bad people. We commiserate. You know, it's nice to be around people who, who are the same as you are. That doesn't make us a religion. It doesn't make us religious. That doesn't mean we're following anything. What are we following? We don't sit around and worship the fact that we don't believe in a God. And it gets really old, this whole notion that atheists are in a religion. We're not in a religion. And somebody write, wrote a book and said, well, atheists, the unknown religion of atheism. I'm sorry. Just because somebody wrote a book doesn't mean it, it's true. I think if there's a if it was a religion, atheists would be the first to know it. If they weren't a religion, um, we just want to be treated like everybody else. You know, we don't we don't think that uh, your God should be in our money. We don't think that your God should be in our pledge. The, the pledge of allegiance should, should stand for everybody, everybody, including people who don't believe in God. So why does it have under God in it? Our currency. Has in God we trust. No, we don't. Sorry, that does not stand for me as an American. Might stand for you, but it doesn't stand for me, and it should stand for everybody. It's our currency. It represents us. You know, we the people. And people get a little tired of having their being discounted and, and ignored. Oh, yes, we. Oh, we're such a bunch of... America's such a religious little, little country. Everybody's so religious. No, we're not all religious. A lot of us aren't. A lot of us don't believe in your God. A lot of us find your religion and your God offensive. So don't include us in your stupid pledge and your money. It's our money, too. And those things should not exist at all. And so we protest. And, you know, when you're trying to shove your religion down the throats of our children, we protest. Or when you try to put your monuments on what should be a government, pro government property representing all of us, we protest. Doesn't make it a religion. Doesn't make us following anything. You know, we're following atheism like women or men might, might follow the idea of people having equal rights. Why am I following atheism? Because I'm an atheist. 
and they put four the atheist response because I know everything and atheism rocks again something an atheist would never say as I have said consistently through this whole thing it's the, it's a the, the theist who has to have the, the illusion or the delusion that they know everything oh I I don't really know but oh yes I do because my book says so I have all the answers to everything because my Bible says so you have to have you you cannot stand the idea that you don't know and you don't know it, the the answers to these questions so you have to have made up answers so if anybody thinks they know everything I'm sorry it's the Christian I'm the enlightened one I know everything I know the one road that you should follow I know the one path to heaven if you don't if you don't believe what I believe you're gonna go to hell and burn forever and the atheist honestly I don't know and I'm fine with that I'm perfectly okay with the fact that there are questions that I don't know the answer to and yet at the end they try to turn that around and say well the atheist acts like they know everything no it's the other way around I'm sorry it's the Christian who has to have the delusion that they know all the answers as for atheism rocks at the end yeah being an atheist rocks I can't even begin to say how much it rocks having gone the majority of my adult life as a Christian believing in all those things thinking that I could you know, I, 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 I was born corrupt and that I need Jesus, that I need to follow Jesus, that I need to pray, that I need to ask for forgiveness every time I make a mistake, that I need to feel bad for the fact that I just can't ever be a good enough Christian. I'm sorry, after most of my life being a Christian, and now understanding that there isn't a sky daddy up there listening to my every thought, keeping track of everything I say, watching my every move. It rocks. The freedom is unbelievable. Knowing that I can be strong on my, on my own. That I don't have to have this crutch. That I don't have to feel like I, I have to have somebody affirming me and oh, Jesus loves me. <laughs> I, I know somebody loves me. Somebody loves me. So I have value because somebody loves me. I mean, no. I have value because I, I just do. I have value because I exist. I have value because I think I have value. I don't care if anybody else sees it. I think I do. I see it. That's all that matters. Atheism does rock. Atheism being an atheist, realizing that it was all a lie, it was, it was very upsetting. I was very angry and resentful and bitter that I was lied to for the majority of my life. Angry. But when that part of it kind of started to dissipate, and I started, it's like being in a city all your life that's filled up with smog and climbing to the highest mountain and breathing in the clean air and realizing for the first time in your life what it feels like to breathe the, the pure physical ecstasy of breathing for the first time in your life that's what it is to be an atheist after being a Christian for most of your life it does rock. I'm sorry. Maybe you're just secretly a little bit jealous because you don't know what it feels like. Anyway, seeing this little picture on Facebook kind of set me off and I wanted to make a video. <laughs> so if you've been watching, thanks. Bye!